हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी विल बी गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट वर्ल्ड वॉर वन एंड डेवलपमेंट ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी ड्यूरिंग दैट टाइम सो व्हाट प्रोमलगेट्स मी टू गेट दिस टॉपिक टुडे इज एज यू आर अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट हाउ वी हैव बीन क्वारंटाइंड बिकॉज ऑफ द कोविड नाइन्टीन नाउ यू शुड ऑल्सो अंडरस्टैंड द प्रोस्पेक्ट what war was having at that point of time during 1914 to 1918 now what we need to understand about war or any such pandemic is that it always creates a kind of chaos right now there is chaos chaos in the world as modern science writing course enables us to unfold the maxims of journalism and how the pursuits of journalism can give a great impact on society through its vocal contributions on views that are mostly coming from critical foundations so we need to study deeply about how a chaos became a creation when world war 1 was started so without further ado right now i first want to tell you briefly about the causes of world war 1 now what were the causes the historians are still in a daze because the ultimate cause of world war is very much controversial what we need to understand is in the modern context as we see that there has become a nexus of power struggle between three countries china united states of america and iran similarly there has been a power nexus earlier when german empire and austrian hungary on one side and french republic and britain joined by us opposed each other what was the dispute the dispute began when ottoman empire declined but what was the ultimate cause that led human beings to decide on world war 1 it was july crisis now student july crisis of 1914 attributes to the assassination of archduke franz ferdinand of austria by the bosnian serb nationalist gavrilo princip who had been supported by a nationalist organization in serbia this crisis escalated and naturally it became a conflict between austria hungary and serbia was joined by their allies russia germany france and ultimately belgium other factors that came into play were the diplomacy that in that circulated with these nations now what we need to understand being a science writer is that we have to consider facts not only on the basis of facts but on the basis of opinions and on the basis of reason very interestingly the next point of mine is a hugely successful book war as i knew it by george s patton this book has given tremendous tremendous support from soldiers as well as military officials and also this has been negated 
because there were certain vocal aggressions in the presentation of war we all know what war does to us war is severe on humanity war destroys lives war ends humanity war ends lives millions and millions of lives are wiped out just for the sake of political treatise just for the sake of diplomatic purposes just for the sake of establishing power hierarchy over one nation to another as i have said that we move on to our next slide perception matters a lot why do i say this because our subject is about studying deeply on the scientific and technological development that came as an aftermath of world war 1 i would like to co- quote william jennings bryan who is a political writer why do i quote him is because that war is such a dynamic thing that it needs to be looked at from the perspective of socialist as well as from the perspec- perspectives of rationalists as well he is saying in war science has proven itself an evil genius it has made war more terrible than it ever was before man used to be content to slaughter his fellow fellow men single on a single thin the earth surface science had taught him to go down into the water and shoot up from below and to go up into the clouds and shoot down from above thus making the battlefield three times as bloody as it was before now we do see that it was a highly highly negative perspective that came on science but what should we consider over here is that science is not only to be seen through the eyes of political critics but also should be seen through scientists and inventors my next slide consists of a quote from the great man glen t seaborg who is a chemist himself he says people must understand that science is inherently neither a potential for good nor for evil it is a potential to be harnessed by a man to he- do his bidding so basically i find this to be the optimum answer to all the questions that might be coming into our minds that why war and whether science is responsible whether science is responsible for wiping out millions of lives no science is not responsible to wipe out millions of lives it is we human being who have to understand what can become the aftermath of our great inventions what can become deadly to the human kind now the next slide as you see consists of the chemical warfare that was involved during world war 1 since our aim is to study the development of science and technology as i have said in the previous slide it belongs to a scientist mr glen t c borg now we uh, say about uh, the invention during that time so what were the inventions first of all tear gases we all know the purpose of tear gas why it is used basically it is a lacrimatory agent which obstructs the respiratory system and creates a kind of difficulty not only to the throats and the lungs but also to eyes as well and thus 
it helps in dispersing crowds as well as helps in weakening the opposite army that we are facing now we also talk about chlorine how now this is very interesting why chlorine has been very much a part of world war 1 so chlorine also forms hydrochloric acid i repeat hydrochloric acid which can cause some similar reaction by creating cough make the victim vomit and also it might cause irritation to eyes the other part is phosgene and diphosgene now why is this important phosgene and diphosgene also causes respiratory problems within human kinds now you have to understand one thing phosgene becomes a severe severe gas phosgene and diphosgene becomes a severe gas as followed after chlorine because like chlorine this also creates results in death now after that we move on to mustard gas now this is also another gas which is related to chlorine now mustard gas is used because it creates a kind of mutation in dna leading to death now chemistry students you must know how this has become evident how chemistry has become very very evident in world war 1 and what were the chemical components that were used to create severity on enemy camp moving on to my next slide how can we forget when we are talking about science that we should also be talking about the medical science that uh, that gained momentum during that time medicine is not only a science it is also an art it does not consists of compounding pills and plasters it deals with the very processes of life which must be understood before they may be guided rightly said by paracelsus so what are the path breaking discoveries of medical science during that time you will be a main students to know that during that time blood bank was invented because prior to world war 1 there was no system of blood transfusion it is only during the world war 1 blood transfusions were made possible and as you can see this was the first equipment dealing with the blood transfusion as blood was sampled in the bottle and carried for transfusion purpose and refrigeration was followed to extend its shelf life 
यूएस आर्मी डॉक्टर कैप्टन वॉसवल रॉबर्सन एस्टैब्लिस्ड द फर्स्ट वर्ल्ड बैंक इन नाइनटीन ऑन द वेस्टर्न फ्रंट नाउ एज वी मूव अहेड physiology in practical application we are talking about war therefore we must also talk about physiology joseph hubertus pilati a german body builder was the first to coin the term contrology on his principle of performing certain bodily postures that would help militaries train themselves train themselves on the basis of muscular activity stamina building resistance development now moving on to technology before we move i want to quote don delillo war is the ultimate realization of modern technology why because necessity is the mother of invention until and unless we find answers to the problems the solution cannot save millions of lives therefore and also make a way for certain discoveries for sure so as we move we will uh, speak about the technological de- advancements developing in modern engineering skills so first of all we speak about the great or will write the right brothers who made drones who had already prepared the drones and uh, it was Charles Kettering who first experimented for an unmanned aerial torpedo in 1918 though it did not uh, get the chance to uh, display its skills display the skills of the drones in the world war 1 because by 1918 it was ready and by 1918 world war 1 got over so and also during this time the catering bug that consisted of a papier mache fuselage and cardboard wings which relied on barometer and gyroscope for guidance now you understand the invention which was very crucial in order to kill uh, numerous enemy from the enemy camp it was it was a kind of uh, necessity that can target the camp and destroy in masses so next we speak about the invention that got metallurgy to a new height which is stainless steels chemistry students must be knowing that uh, before iron was used and to use iron there was a layer of chromium there there was iron got easily rusted and chromium oxide formed a layer which made the iron rust therefore 
uh, stainless steel was discovered stainless steel was discovered which uh, which was very evident that it paved way for it paved way for uh, the usage of arms and weapons okay uh, i would like to repeat that uh, it has been mistakenly said by me it is actually ferrous oxide that was formed on hot iron now in stainless steel you have chromium oxide which does not rust therefore making stainless steel the equipment the perfect metal to create arms and weapons that would not have the have any problem if kept at temperatures which make iron rust now for the next part we talk about the great invention by kimberly clark who had developed a product which is kleenex which is kleenex uh, earlier they had developed a, a product which was used for sanitation by ladies and was named as cotex and from that kimberly and clark uh, developed kleenex in 1924 from cellu cotton that were used for to prevent that were used to prevent the spread of germs this is indeed a great discovery in terms of keeping in terms of keeping in mind the sanitation that was required in hospitals after numerous people were admitted for cure in the last slide i would like to talk about a journalist of that time who covered world war 1 was william beach thomas he was among the six journalist who was who was nominated by daily mail and daily mirror to cover the war in broader prospects now students we have completed all the uh, fractions of science and uh, technology that i needed you to uh, understand and uh, in the end i would like to conclude that uh, this is also a favorite quote of mine in the midst of chaos there is also opportunity so uh, during this time of chaos you should not lose your heart because in order to have creation you need chaos there cannot be life without problems if you want life without problems then there will be no inventions and no discoveries in true sense as students of science you should always utilize what is there in front of you and what is there not in front of you what is there in front of you promulgates you to achieve what is not there in front of you in hope i uh, today i conclude my lecture and the notes of this particular part will be provided to you in pdf please follow the instructions and uh, also prepare yourselves for further uh, notes thank you